right. So, yeah. My talk is on how to pick pockets. As you can see, there are some empty seats. Clearly, they didn't want me to find anything that's in there. So, for me to be able to do what I do, I need someone else's pockets. So I've been wandering around seeing who would be nice enough to come and help. And the answer is, from all your faces, no one. <laughs> so we'll see what we can do when I ask people to just come up here. Like this gentleman. What is your name? Oh, yes, you. <laughs> seeing as though he just looked at me like a deer in headlights. What is your name, sir? Mike, would you be nice enough to come and help me for one moment? Give Mike a round of applause. Thank you. Hello, Mike. Hi. I'm going to be on this side for one second. Sure. And we're going to get the m cameraman to help out on this point because we're going to do a little bit of close-up magic that hopefully you will be able to see on stage on the cameras. And then we'll do it with you. OK? Sure. It is just a trick with my ring, if you don't mind taking a look. And also, if you don't mind, you'll notice while I'm doing this trick, I pull my sleeves back. No one trusts me. I don't trust you. Pull those bad boys back. All right, so normal ring, aside from the fact that it is just a, yeah. a very large ring, but normal nonetheless, because in a moment I'm going to frustrate everybody here. So if we can come in a little close to the hand here. Perfect. How are we doing? Perfect. Please watch close as we take that off and throw it back on. Yeah, it gets weirder, folks. <laughs> it gets way weirder. I'm going to watch that on the camera there, right about there. There we go. Excellent. It all came from this. You probably all remember your uncle or dad doing this silly, dumb thing, right? Yeah. When you get better at it, make sure the camera's got it, okay? Right there. Just like that. Magnets. It's just magnets. But the interesting thing is this. We're going to try some fun stuff with you, sir. Hold your hand open for me. Excellent. I'm going to ask you to hold on to the ring. Squeeze it tight. Turn your hand over, but don't pull my finger. Yep. I was not a fan of that when I was a child. Thank you. <laughs> Hold that open as well. Not closed, open. open. I apologize, I can't speak English either. Uh, my ring is going to jump from here to there. Are you ready for that? Yeah. One, two, three. Open this hand. I said I'd get it there. I didn't say how. <laughs> Not all of these are good tricks. Some of these are bad jokes, OK? <laughs> but if I take the ring and I make it go, did you feel it go in your pocket? No. Not on this side. No, no, on this side. This right here, did you, uh, oh, what's this? What do you have here? That's your, sorry, if you don't mind, I'm a little invasive. Yeah, uh, is that your, oh, that's your ID cards. Yeah, that's, your stuff. that's all your wallet and stuff. And I love the tight pants you Europeans wear. It makes my job so much fun. But that's that there. I don't want to play with that. But did you feel the ring on that side's there, sir? No? no? Okay, well, that's that still. So we'll put that back. I apologize on that part. <laughs> sorry about that. We'll put that back there. Now, on that side, you didn't have anything, yes? Nope. Did you feel, me do, you feel me take that back out? No, I didn't. Oh, good. Then you probably didn't feel me steal that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Thank you very, very much. Thank Cheers. You. Okay, thank, you. thank you. Please watch your step. So that's the entertaining side of that. So how do we apply that to what you guys like, and that's security? Let me show you. Can I borrow my lovely assistant? Where did he go? Not this gentleman. He was nice. But uh, Anders, where did you run off to to disappear on me? Son of a bitch. All right. That's fine. I know he, he said he would be here to help me. Thanks. All right. Then I'm going to have to borrow someone to uh, practice this with. So I am so sorry, folks. I had a dummy. I mean, assistant. That I was going to show you all on this with, but uh, Dan, would you be okay if I borrow you just to show some stuff? I'll be your monkey. Thank you, sir. Give Dan a big round of applause. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate it. Seriously. I don't so, your European pants. <laughs> make my demonstration so much easier. So, why do we worry about this? Why, obvi for obvious immediate reasons, I don't want to lose money. I don't want to lose my identification. I don't want to lose the fancy watch I just bought to show off for my friends. I get that. But also, there's IDs that people need to get into their security locations. Lanyards and ID badges that hang off clothes that I love so much and makes my job easy. 
because you guys are far more impressed with the fact that I stole something that allows you to get into high tight security, and all I did was squeeze an alligator clip. I'm just glad I get paid for it. So we're going to demonstrate with Dan on his pocket. So I apologize, Dan. You're not going to get to see the audience. You're going to turn around. And everyone gets to see the better side of Dan. OK? Now, Dan, uh, we're going to go after the wallet here, just so everyone can kind of see what we're doing here. Sure. It doesn't matter what kind of distraction is being used as long as there is something to divvy up Dan's attention. That's important. And there's very little of that. <laughs> so what we're going to do is simply this. We're going to go over the mechanics of how this works so you get an idea of exactly what's happening. And then we'll explain how I am a stranger able to get close enough to you to actually do this. OK? And the mechanic side is very simple. We use two fingers to start, three to finish. I'll show you what I mean. If you can watch on the camera here. Two fingers to start, thumb goes in, finger goes in. I separate it from his butt, so he's not going to feel this part so much. And then the third finger helps clip it, like so. And I notice there's a bit of friction there, so I have to make Dan move to not feel the friction. I can ask him simply to say, please walk forward. And in that action, he walks, out of, walks the wallet out of the pocket. We'll put it back for one second. My personal favorite is this one. It's just me being a little belligerent and kicking his foot. So step forward. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little belligerent. It's a little rude. But I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really all it is. Now, under this guy's here, we're just going to put this back, Dan, and then we'll have you turn back around. So now you understand that the techniques aren't that difficult. You have to be courageous enough to do this. But as long as you understand the techniques, the techniques are simple. It's applying them that's hard. Because here's a great example. Dan, stand there, face me. Aside from the fact that I'm almost a head taller than you, <laughs> and almost as almost just as wide, uh, meaning I'm a big boy. We both like food. Yes. <laughs> here's, here's the interesting thing. I have a feeling that if I walk into your personal space, you're going to let me know it. Probably. Especially if you don't know me. So if I walk like this towards you, let me know when this is uncomfortable. <laughs> Everyone feels this way unless, you know, there's some social interactions that we've forgotten. But this is bad for reasons. You don't want people in that personal space unless you know them, because if you don't know them, you don't know what they're going to do. And as a more caveman way of looking at it, there are very important, vital things here. I don't want near, the, near these things. And all my valuables tend to be near these things. So we don't want anyone near that. So I have to get past that. Now, there is a great talk by a master pickpocket named Apollo Robbins. He talks about this in great detail in the science of it. I unfortunately don't uh, describe it his way. I describe it in a way that I'm more comfortable with. And that is uh, just the alpha male mentality, um, it's that eye contact thing. If I'm making eye contact with Dan, Dan doesn't want to break eye contact. One of us is going to give eventually. So I let him. I let him win. And this is the fun part about it. When I let Dan's eye contact win, he feels he's now in charge. And that allows me to get closer because his confidence is up. I'll explain. So when I walk towards Dan, I break eye contact, I shrink just a little bit, and now I'm in his personal space, and he feels like he's in charge. Okay. <laughs> he's not, but I want him to feel that way. Because I want to be able to get into your <laughs> I want to be able to get into his personal space 
to do my job, which is take his stuff. <laughs> I need to distract him. Now, magic is a great distraction. It's what I use all the time to mainly entertain people and have fun with it while I steal your phone, your wallet, and your watch. But you don't get to do magic tricks in the security sense. Luckily, everyone here has the perfect distraction in their pocket. And all I do is this. Dan, I am so new here. Could you help me find this place I'm trying to look for? And he will look on my phone. It's my phone. <laughs> it's my phone. So I am perfectly allowed within my rights to come up nice and close to Dan Shame to look at my phone. phone. <laughs> well, I don't need to do that part. That's messy. <laughs> but while you're looking at said phone, trying to navigate whatever it is, that's what allows me to get in nice and close and try and take things. Mm -hmm. So if I'm doing all this kind of stuff, oh, sorry, non-existent person is coming, move back. And then that allows me to take whatever I want <laughs> and do it under the guise of doing certain things. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate it. So I want you to realize that this, people in your personal space is a real thing. Obviously, I've been told many times that the Swedish are a more interesting group when it comes to this. You seem to be all very reserved people. You don't like laughing at too many jokes. <laughs> but that's fine. I like a challenge. But that being said, I do have to work and try and get into your personal space. And I usually find under the guise of being a jovial person, that tends to break barriers. That is the perfect reason for you guys to worry when it's dealing with security. If someone is being really nice and you don't know them, that should be a warning. <laughs> and in that case, arm distance is great. I can't reach anything at Dan's reach. If Dan puts his arm up, as sort of like a, a stiff arm in, in football or a security arm kind of thing, I can't get any closer to take anything. So if you don't feel comfortable with someone in your security and you're talking to someone new, I find just a nice resting arm on their shoulder. Whenever they decide to get a little closer, I move with them. Helps out a lot. <laughs> now, another technique that is fun for me, I don't know if it'll be fun for you guys, is Dan, uh, Dan has the wallet in the back pocket. He also has some other things. Now, I noticed you have a hanging item. Several? Yes. But I'm curious on the one hanging item. Is it the normal kind, or do I have to do like a special code? Oh, it no, does. You got to twist it. You got to twist it? Yeah. You That's lovely. This way, and then I'll let you get it to a normal position just for a second so yeah, we can sort of explain it. Twist it like that. Okay. So, to steal something like this, if we can get the camera to move just a little bit, down and over. Perfect. Obviously, I'm not going to do this part. If I see this, I'm going to find the next person that has a normal one. <laughs> it is an opportunistic skill for a reason. But that being said, once we've gotten this to this position, I find these hanging items are very easy to take. Because once it's off his person, meaning it's not leaning on him anymore, Dan doesn't really feel anything. I can move this around pretty easy as long as there's no jingle jangle of keys or, in this case, small containers of unknown substances. <laughs> but once we have it in this position where it's unlocked, I can quite easily pull that off. So those little hang, these little, uh, capsules. yeah, well, not the capsules, the, uh, the hook that you get for for uh, cl mountain climbing or... Carabiner. Yeah, carabiner, thank you. I apologize, I, I've dealt with these things for 10 years and I still don't know their name. But this part here yeah, it's a twist lock. is so easy to deal with. You just, when you don't have a twist lock on it, you just squeeze it. It's as easy to put on as it is to take off. 
It's just a squeeze. And as long as Dan doesn't know I'm behind him, I can take my time and do this. If Dan is talking about something, and we all know Dan can talk about stuff, I have all the time in the world to take my time, set this up so Dan doesn't feel anything. I probably could get away with doing that part there to about there, and then when I want to do the final move without him feeling anything, oh, sorry, Dan, and I just give him a quick shove, and now I've got it, and I make my getaway. Okay, I'll let you put that back on. Now, all this takes practice. You're not going to get it on the first try. You're not going to get it on the second try. You may not get it on the 20th try. But you have to practice to get good at it, and the only way you get good at it, you can have makeshift dummies at home to practice the technique, but unfortunately, you just have to do it. If you just follow Nike's ad of just doing it, you will get caught, because you've never done it before. That's where the rub is. It's sort of like you can't get hired until you get experience, but you can't get experience until you get hired. So it's sort of the same thing with pickpocketing. You can't get good at it until you do it. You can't do it until you're good at it. It's a weird, weird moment there. Um, I'm going to ask Dan to sit down for one moment. Thank you so much, Dan. We're going to borrow somebody else for one second so we can go over a different thing here. Thank you very much, Dan. Now, I'm going to go over this one part here. And if it's okay, we're going to borrow you again, okay? Uh, just so I can go over this part because my favorite thing that I've noticed being here at this talk is a lot of you have smart watches. Gosh, there's a lot of good information on those watches. So if you can steal one of those and hand it to one of your friends that can deal with one of those, oh, you're laughing. So how do we take one of those off? Well, Warren, you tell the person to roll up their sleeves. <laughs> Makes my life easy, doesn't it? Yeah. Yep. Again, get you to concentrate on whatever it is. In this case, it was my ring. Yeah. Okay, you would hold your hand open. So we're going to go over this part just so we can kind of understand what's going on. I ask him to close his hand around the item. I do the little silly gag of the pulling the finger thing, but we won't do that right now. We'll save you the trouble of that dad joke. But when I'm turning this over, all I'm doing is squeezing here. But I'm doing that under the simple guise of rotating his wrist. The proper way. The, you go the other way, it's assault. <laughs> okay? So to do this part, it's very simple. I put my hand and finger right here. I give it a squeeze. When I'm squeezing and I ask him to rotate his wrist, I use the friction of my finger to take it out of those two little safety tabs. I give it one good squeeze, hold on tight. When I ask him to hold on tight, I give it a pull, and that pops the pin. Once we've popped the pin, I use the same finger to open that up, and I'm ready to go. I keep my thumb on the face of the watch to make it stay there. I don't want him to feel it come off ever, but I don't want him to feel this part because this part opening allows air to go underneath. Have you ever loosened a watch a bit and then you feel all gross because air had touched all the sweat under your hand? I'm sure you'll all notice it now, okay? But when that happens, it's going to bring attention down to here and I don't want that. That's why I squeeze this here, okay? This is ready to go. The pin is back. We push this off and I'm here. I don't want this to go anywhere until at the absolute last minute or last second. So I'm going to hold on to here for a couple more seconds. I'm going to make a dumb joke, drop the ring, open the other hand, and then I steal the watch. Now, that being said, there are a multitude of ways to take a watch. The question is, which way is better? They all work 
equally well. It's just what do you want to take? Do I want to take this version here? Do I want to try and take, there's a gentleman from the security there who's got a fancy watch. It looks like a leather band, but it's actually designed like a Rolex. And that will definitely gum up the works when I'm trying to work with it, unless I know that already. So I do reconnaissance. I appreciate you coming up here. I'm going to continue talking. I don't want you standing there too awkwardly. <laughs> there are different kinds of watches, so we have to practice different kinds. To slide them off, to yank them off, to make horrible noises with our mouths as we pull the Velcro off. <laughs> as long as there is some kind of distraction, we can get these watches off. Now, I know some of you in the back are probably going, no, you can't get this version, because this one has to do the, the thing. If it's a standard kind of watch, I can guarantee you anyone that does this for a living or worth their salt can get it off. It's just a question of them distracting you enough or directing your attention enough for them to get it. The same thing goes for lanyards. The same thing goes for just about anything that is worth of either value or importance. Okay. Now, normally this is where I ask people to ask questions, but I've been warned that some of you may not want to ask questions until I'm done this talk and then you'll try and corner me in the bar. <laughs> so I invite you to ask your questions now because I want the interaction to work with it. And I will let you know that you can come to me at any time after I will be happy to answer those questions, provided that those questions are asked also now. Otherwise, I'll be very grumpy and I won't want to answer later. <laughs> so does anyone have any questions they would like me to kind of cover? Thank you for being very brave, sir. You. How about you just yell it out and I'll repeat it into the mic? How would you steal a badge? How do I steal a badge? There's different ways, particularly these. Yeah. Now, I've noticed that you guys don't have the same one I have. The one I have has a nice little clip at the back. Which is yours. Oh, they do? I don't have a red one, so I didn't see. So, and yours is all tied up. <laughs> might, I, might I see yours, dear, since you're, yours is off already and quickly? You want it? Just that. Not you. It's fine. You can have it as well. Thank you for the offer. <laughs> now, taking these off are just the same as any other any item that you want to take. You have to know how they come apart. Now, this part here, I probably wouldn't worry about this part at all. I wouldn't deal with this at all. I would deal with this part down here. Because a lot of you are thinking you're very savvy and you tie it on your belt or you put it somewhere where you feel like, I am a different kind of person. I don't want this hanging around my neck. I'll put it somewhere else. But the nice thing is, is that these are just like Dan's little hook there. What do you call it again, Dan? Carabiner. Carabiner. In the fact that that just opens. If I can get close enough to open that, that will fall off. The question is, is how do I distract you to get this? I get that. So I'm going to have to be in your personal space a little more than usual. I'm not going to be able to cheat and sort of be beside you or in front of you. Like, I, I, I have to be a lot closer. Thank you very, very much. So in order to do that, I have to come up with other ways that I want to get in closer to do those things. I might have to... I wouldn't do the... I, okay, let me preface this. There are two circles of this particular skill. There's the criminal side and there's the entertainer side. Taking this would not be entertaining unless you want to see someone look embarrassed or hurt. To take one of those, I would be belligerent, I would be rude, and probably swear in your face. 
but that allows me the distraction to get into your personal space, put my hand on it, pop the pin, take that as I push you, and walk away. Now, if I'm working by myself, I wouldn't want to do that. But if I'm working in a team, which most pickpockets do, I would do this thing. I have my tag that's important, and then I hand it off to my partner, and then you come and angrily come to me. I've got nothing on me now. I've taken care of my job. You're going to come and be angry with me. That's fine. I don't have any evidence now. I've handed it off to somebody else. And that's what makes it not entertaining to do as a, as a performer. It makes it more fun to, well, not really fun for you. Let's put it like that. So I hope that answers your question. Does anyone else have any other questions? Yes, I'm seeing hands. I love this. I'm going to go further back because hardly anyone ever gets asked further back. Uh, let's go with this nice person here. How many times have you been punched in the face? How many times have I been punched in the face? I've lost count, but not because of this. <laughs> um, and the reason why I'll bring this up is for this reason. Uh, I do martial arts. Uh, I've been doing martial arts for over 20 years now. That helps with the confidence of getting into people's personal space. <laughs> so if you are in those certain avenues, you will find this a lot easier to do and perform than others if you're not used to having people in your personal space. So I enjoy the joke, but notice how we turned it into an actual thing. <laughs> Let's try over here. Yes. yes. Did we get the microphone working? I think it's working. Yes. Yeah. What did I do wrong when I stole your... Uh, phone. Oh, your attempt. Okay. Um, okay, yeah. No, no, no. It, sorry. Um, you hesitated. When you're taking something, if you hesitate, you have a higher chance of being noticed than, than just straight up taking it. Now, you don't take fast. Fast does not mean good. Fast just means fast. Smooth is better than fast. Smooth works with that mentality. So if you're taking something from the back, if we want to move the camera, I'll save Dan the, the worry on this part. If we move the camera down there so we can see this part here. Oh, we get the whole view. That's great. There we go. If we can zoom in on just the back end there. Perfect. When you're taking this out, what you were doing, you were doing this, right? Trying to slowly do this. But in that jerky motion, I, I felt it. You jerky did. So when, when you have your grip on the item, that motion is much better. Okay? So when you're taking something, you have to commit. If you don't commit, you will get caught. Does that make sense? Thank you. All right. Um, in this day and age, with Me Too, is it harder to get close to women? these days than men. I have not noticed that, but that could just be me. <laughs> now, that being said, women make their job easier for me because I think it, well, we can go down a whole rabbit hole, and I'll be happy to explain this further, but essentially, women's clothes aren't designed to keep things in their pockets. <laughs> Luckily, we have a plethora of bags for you to put all your stuff in, and that doesn't touch your body at all. That makes my job so much easier, because I can reach into that pocket that is designed specifically to hang off you, and no, I have noticed here that people are very good with closing up their purses, their messenger bags, and their backpacks. Kudos to all of you. However, in normal life, you will notice, especially now that I've mentioned it, how many people just walk around with these open bags because they're in a rush. And when these bags are all open like this, taking stuff out of bags is not hard when you, when you know how easy it is to take it off a person. So, Yes and no. 
Yes, it will be harder because the clothes are not designed to have stuff in the pockets, but no, because women have bags to put their stuff in and makes it easier for me to get in there. So, got the joke out of the way, but we got an actual answer. I hope that's okay. <laughs> All right, awesome. Oh, we got another one, yes. How do you keep yourself safe in a crowded space? How to, how to keep yourself safe in a crowded space? I mean space. you specifically. Me specifically. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so under the context of the question, I'm assuming how do I protect myself from someone stealing stuff from me? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, there's a couple things you can do is very simple. One, limit what you have on you. You don't have to have everything on you. I know some of you are worried about people going through your stuff in your room, but if you're that concerned with going into a big open space, you should limit how much money, how much valuables you have on yourself, especially being a tourist. So if that's something that you're concerned with, a limitation of what you have on you is always best. Take essentials only, not bunches of stuff. Because if you, the more items you have, the more this divvies up your attention. So if you're worried about your cell phone, your wallet, your keys, it's three things. And then you bring a lanyard, you bring your second cell phone, you bring your card reader, you bring like all these all little items that you want to put in your pockets. Now you have multiple things to worry about. That divvies up more attention. I don't know about you, but if you ever tried to juggle and then sing and then also ride a bike, that's kind of difficult. So if you're making it easier on their job by putting too many things in your pockets, because it divvies up your attention. So that would be my, bur my main thing, absolute essentials. That's the first thing. Second, this one's a little cliche and it comes from cops, like actual police officers, when they see someone that's gotten into a brawl and they're like, what would you have done in my situation? And the answer is, I wouldn't have been in that situation because an ounce of prevention and all that. If you feel like this is going to be a place that you don't want to be in, don't go. Follow your instincts on that one. If you find yourself being somewhere and you have to be there, that's different. But if you don't have to be there, then don't be there. And I will say this uh, as a safety measure for all of you. Now that some of you kind of understand how this works and we'll go into more detail in person, uh, in, in person on practices. And yes, you will actually get, I will let you reach in and take stuff out of my pocket. I don't discriminate. It'll be fine. But if you find yourself in that position, there's too many people around you and you think that this is gonna happen, let them take your wallet. It's better than a knife in the ribs. So, I, I mean, it's borderline robbery at that point. They might as well just say, give me all your stuff. But if you find yourself, you've gotten to that position, just, you know, let them take the thing out of your pocket and just report it as quickly as possible. But prevention is your best bet, which is just try not to be in those situations. If you found yourself in that situation, try and get out as easy as you can. And at that point, it's one of those things where, you know, take the change out of your pocket, throw it at the floor and run kind of thing. I hope that answers some of your question. I do tend to ramble, I apologize. I saw some hands at the back. I wanna make sure I don't miss back people because I can see people in the front. Let's get this, this gentleman. Um, this is sort of a two-part question. Okay. Is, let's say um, uh, there's a specific item that someone puts in their bag. Yes. Uh, and, um, well, I can join you as an example, because I, I would see it, uh, how you would find the Kindle I have in my bag and take it. Okay, it's a very good question. In Hollywood, it appears the pickpocket just walks up, takes the item, walks away. It's almost like a crime of passion. Like it just happened. In reality, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do intel on you. If you have said item in said bag, I want the item. Come there. I, have, I have the said item in said bag. 
I see. I would not be able to do it in like the two minutes that we would be having you up on stage. Because what would happen is, is that I notice there is an item that I need out of that bag. Then I'm going to take my time to find out when that bag is no longer on your person. That'll take time. I have to follow you for a while. Watch you eat lunch. See you on your breaks, that sort of thing. And eventually, that bag will get put down. There is something in the business called a booster bag. A booster bag is a fake bag that you would put over another bag. And inside, it clips onto said bag and gets lifted with that bag. So I wouldn't worry about the one item that's in your bag. I would just take the whole bag and look for it later. To cover that, so you wouldn't immediately notice that, is what's called a booster bag. I would walk up beside you, put my bag literally over top of yours under the guise of maybe asking you for instructions on where, the, where can I get a good cup of coffee. I would maybe work in a team, have a nice young lady talk to you a little too close to get your attention. Sorry for being sexist on that one, but that works on a lot of men. Surprisingly, even on, never mind, we won't get into that conversation. Uh, but the bag is designed to fit over your bag. And then inside it, it compresses onto it through gravity and allows me to pick up my bag and walk with yours. And because my bag is covering yours, once you finally figure it out, you're just going to see my bag. So it's going to interrupt your brain. Your brain's going, that man was near me, but that's his bag, not my bag. Where's my bag? So I get deleted from the equation. If I have given more time, I'll actually make one and bring it in to demonstrate for you. <laughs> I didn't have enough time. This was a last minute talk. But we can go over discussions on that more thoroughly after the talk if you want, because I think there are fascinating tools for pickpockets, which actually allows me to dive into another thing, talking about pickpocketing is not just what I have on me. Pickpocketing is nowadays, especially with everyone pulling things out of their pockets because it's uncomfortable to sit on your phone. Things get deposited on tables. And this allows me to work outside of your pockets, but still picking your pockets. And that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> I hope that helps with your, your first part of your question. Do you have a second part now? No, the, 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 okay. the, the second part was actually, um, if you would try to pick, pickpocket something out of my bag, how difficult, how difficult are different types of bags? just as difficult as puzzles are. Some puzzles are easy, some puzzles are hard. The only difference is, is do I want to waste my time trying to open that? If it's important, like you said, the ID tag is what I'm after, then I'm not going to waste time trying to open it up and not have you notice. I'm just going to take the whole bag. And then I'll deal looking for it later. That's where that booster bag comes into play. I hope that helps. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Ah, sir. Nice and loud, and I'll just repeat it in the microphone. Oh, there he is. Then I got you guys, don't worry. Would it be possible for you to show on yourself a priority of where I should put my things? To priority is usually in your front pockets. I find back pockets are not always the best place to put things. Um, it, but it's also what you feel comfortable with. If you don't feel comfortable putting things there and you have to have it back here, then I would do things to make sure they stay in those pockets. Uh, people have chains that attach to their wallets. Uh, some people will put rubber bands around their wallets, whatever they feel comfortable, whatever will make it more difficult to put there. One thing I find that a lot of people don't do because their wallets are too big, and that's button their back pocket. Honestly, it's just enough of a deterrent. I know there are pickpockets who actually can pop buttons without you noticing. I tend to just not bother with them 
So whatever small deterrent, if you can make it more difficult, the more likely you will not get your stuff stolen. So an analogy for you nice folk, because you're all tech savvy, I find that you guys are prodding and poking security systems to, make sh to find out where the easy spot is, yes? Same thing. If something's easy, you'll go for it. Something's a little harder, you'll stay away from it. It's the same thing with this. If the pocket is, that's in is buttoned, it's too big and bulky, sorry for the analogy, you do squats and you have a round butt, it makes it more difficult for me to take it out. If you put it in your front pockets and you have tight pants or whatever, this is pretty much a great deterrent. I'm not gonna go in those, okay? Uh, my personal favorite are those fanny, fanny packs, but not the fanny pack, they're like a belt, where it's, it's literally just a belt and you can open it up and slide things inside. It'll, they can fit like a whole bunch of stuff and you can have, have that under your shirt. Those are your best, if you're that concerned about security. But a, f a regular fanny pack with a shirt over top of it will do just the same amount of security for it. So if you're that worried about it, that would be my highest suggestion. And if you would target me very specifically, would it matter where I place my stuff? You specifically? No. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I saw some hands in the front here. Yes. Yeah, so more personal space than pickpocketing. But okay. let's say you're at a company. They have belt clippers with RFID tags. You have a cloner that takes about 30 seconds to a minute of almost contact. Yeah. Do you have a tip on how to maintain that contact without raising suspicion? The same way I, I try not to raise suspicion with being in per people's personal space stealing their stuff. It's literally... I get away with it the best is I get to act as the stupid foreigner. It's the easiest thing I can do. I can just say, I don't understand. Can you please help me? I'm so sorry that I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. We all want to help. And that's unfortunately what I'm taking advantage of. So I hope that helps. It's, it's how creative can you be to be in someone's personal space? So the more questions you can ask, and apologize for, the longer you get to be there. So I hope that helps. And yes. How many times can an average person expect to be pickpocketed in their life? With the majority of people, probably none. It, it, it doesn't happen as, as often as people want you to believe, but that being said, it doesn't mean it won't happen. It's like car accidents. Car accidents would probably be your best. Not everyone's been in a car accident, but we all have all heard of someone being in a car accident. And that's sort of the same thing with pickpocketing. We, not all of us have been pickpocketed, but we all have heard someone has been pickpocketed. So it doesn't happen as often as one might think, but it does happen enough that you should be worried about it. I'll take, I think, what's, what are we doing for time? I'm all pretty much ready to go wrap it up. We'll do one more question. Okay, let's get one more question, and then uh, Dan, yep, sure. been saving you for last, buddy. Let's do it. Okay, um, are there such things as like honey pots for pickpockets? Is there like booby traps or fakes that you could do to like make it look like an easy? So like in computer security, you set up a honey pot and you make it look simple, uh, and right. you'll get script kitties and other people of like yes. like hacker detritus trying to do terrible things and failing horribly. Is, does that concept exist in pickpocketing? I know for myself it does because I like trying to see if I can find people in my area that actually do the same thing I do. And quite frankly, it's having items that stick out of pockets. You, you're, you're literally just making their job easy. Yeah, it's bait. Yeah. yeah. So a pocket with uh, tissue at the bottom so the, the phone doesn't go all the way in. Same with a wallet. Make sure the wallet isn't over thick, that kind of stuff. Watches that don't have a band, they literally sit like this. A pickpocket worth their salt can easily just do that, undone it in like 10 seconds flat, five seconds if they're really good. 
especially if they got nothing else to work with. I'd literally just pop a pin and we're good to go. Yeah, there's ways of making it more attractive. Cool, thank you. <laughs> no, no problem. Folks, I've been given a time limit and this is all the time I have, but I've been told that I am allowed to be up on the second floor and do like little mini workshops tomorrow. So if you are interested, I'll be happy to answer more questions and sort of go over techniques. I hope my talk has been valuable to you. I've had an absolute wonderful time here. Thank you so much. <laughs>